Hello and welcome to Michigan and Other Mayhem, the show about Michigan, murder, mysteries, histories, and other mayhem from around the world. Your hosts are Allie and Jen. Okay, Jen, let's do this thing. Morning, Allie. I am showered and dressed like a homeless person. <laughs> I'm still in my PJs. I'm wearing my very favorite Schoolhouse Rock t-shirt. <sighs> Schoolhouse Rock is like the top of my happiness. Yes. And it was good. And it was good. So what have you got I, going today? Well, I've been developing all week, but today it really hit me. The dreaded Michigan cold. Oh. Because it's warm. It's cold. It's warm. It's rainy. It's snowy. It's rainy. It's warm. It's cold. Yeah. And all week I've just felt under the weather. And then today. It just hit me, runny nose, sneezing, coughing. It's like, oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? That cold is like giving you a curb stomp, you know what I mean? <laughs> so later today, I shall be bathing in Vicks. Nice. Uh, I get it. Like, I'm so old, my shoulder hurts from work. <laughs> so I have been taking hot baths myself. It's <laughs> But today, oh, my, I have so a story I want to tell you today, and it is murder. Ooh, I have a murder. Do Two. you? Two murders. Two murders? All right, you murder. want to go first? A murder, a disappearance, and a murder. Oh, well, I have a murder, and a try to run away, and then a discovery. You go first, though. Do Two <laughs> murders. <laughs> All right. I have the murder of Kathleen Doyle. And the disappearance of Andrea Bowman. Okay. And I think that we had touched on the Kathleen Doyle before. Okay. But I don't think we did the the whole story or we didn't touch on the Andrea Bowman part. Okay. Tell me. But either way, we're doing it. We're doing it. So in September 1980... Kathleen Doyle's dead body was found in her home in Virginia. She was 25. In that investigation, she was found choked with a cord, stabbed with a knife, and raped. Jesus. And, right. And at the time, her husband, they had been married nine months, and he was deployed overseas on a Navy ship. And since there were no suspects, the case didn't get much traction. It wasn't until around 1984 when a Henry Lucas and an Otis Toole were charged with her murder. Okay, yeah, now, those are famous serial killers. Yeah. Yeah. And now it seems the police charged those two with her murder because they had confessed. Yep, that's one thing they're murders. famous for is, yeah, confessing to murders they didn't commit. Yeah. Yeah. But then they were found, you know, after doing some investigation, they didn't kill her. Yeah, that, they're, they're, they're known for um, saying they killed people they didn't to try to increase their kill count. Yeah. That's sad when you're a serial killer who tries to make himself look bigger. <laughs> right. I mean? right. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Now, Andrea, she was age 14, lived in Hamilton, Michigan, with her adoptive parents, and was reported missing in March of 1989. Okay. Shortly before her disappearance, she had accused Dennis Bowman, her stepfather, of molesting her to the school staff. And after an investigation was done, she was actually returned to the Bowman household. That infuriates me. Yeah. And at the time, you know, of her when she vanished, Dennis claimed that she had just stolen cash and then she was gone. Right. He doesn't During know what the, happened. She just left. Right. She ran away. Yeah. During the investigation, it was noted that Dennis had a criminal record at the time, one being a 1980 arrest in western Michigan, where a young woman accused him of trying to lure her into the 
into a wooded area and assault her. And he, pled, and he did plead guilty to assault. Jesus. And there's, they still sent her back to the house with him. Yep. Jesus Christ. Even with his criminal record, it seems nothing was found to lead police to believe he had done something to her. So after the initial investigation, she was classified as a runaway. And she would stay classified as a runaway until 2020. Okay. In 1998, Dennis was arrested for breaking into a home and stealing a woman's lingerie. Okay. So he's disgusting. In 2018, the case of Kathleen Doyle was reviewed, and with DNA from the bed sheets, they were able to run it through the database to match it to Dennis Bowman. And at the time, he lived in Alle Allegan County, Michigan. And that's the girl that was found tied up, stabbed, and raped? Yep, in 1980 okay. in Virginia. And, oh, hey, oh, yeah, in Virginia. Okay, yeah. Yep. Weirdly yep. enough, uh, mine also takes place in Virginia. <laughs> oh, that is. Right. Yeah. In, in November 2019... Dennis was arrested and extradited to Virginia to stand trial. Okay. While, awaiting, while awaiting his trial to begin in this case, he decided in February 2020, he was going to come clean. He confessed to murdering Andrea and told the police where they could find her body and where they could find his bo her body was near their home. And she was under a layer of cement. He had buried her and then put cement. On top of her? Yep. Now, and was then, he married at the time that this happened? Yeah, he had a wife. And she didn't know this? I didn't find anything in any of the news stories. Okay. I got, yeah, I read on so it. So they didn't mention her. About her. Yeah, if they didn't mention her, they probably don't think she's in on it. Yeah. Yeah. He had, he had also confessed to en uh, entering Kathleen Doyle's home drunk, physically assaulting her and murdering her. Jesus Christ. And then in June of 2020, he pled guilty to the murder of Andrea. And additionally, he pled guilty to killing Kathleen Doyle and currently serving two life sentences. And he actually pled, like, confessed and just pled guilty to avoid he says so that his family didn't you know he didn't have to go through a trial or anything like that put oh, suddenly he's back. thinking about his family and how yeah. his actions affect other people right right i don't think that human trash bag is really doing it i bet he's trying to just yeah i don't know i don't believe him i don't believe that he suddenly is like oh i don't want to upset my family you killed people nonchalantly i don't think you suddenly care about other people's feelings right yeah. All right. What you got? All right. So I actually have, weirdly enough, Virginia as well. And so this is something I got from people.com and NBCnews.com. And it's about Brian Trotter. So this is very recent. October 17th, 2021, Brian Trotter left on a road trip with his friend, Robert Coltrane. They're both 25 years old and they've been close friends for like over 10 years. So, you know, we're talking junior high. And immediately when they said that, I thought about um, you and Melanie. Mm -hmm. But then later on, this does not remind me of you and Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this would be the opposite of you and Melanie. <laughs> so, Brian aspired to be a musician. His name was Kent Won't Stop was his like recording name. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The, and the two were leaving to drive to Washington, D.C. to take some you know, promotional photos. And they, they're both from the state of Virginia. So they're just going to drive up to, you know, D.C. So that night, Brian comes, uh, does not come back with Robert. Robert comes back to the Trotter family home and he's acting like a little odd. And he told them that Brian decided to stay with a friend in D.C. So they're not too, too worried. You know, he's 25 years old. Brian's dad did think that Robert was acting like a little antsy and distant during the visit, but nothing that like set off alarms. Right. So, however... The very next morning, still no contact from him. They do report him missing. 
because, you know, he hasn't called back. He's not answering his phone and there's nothing on social media. So after the missing report is filed the next day, Robert Coltrane stops answering calls from the Trotter family and they're not able to find him again. Like he, he goes to them. So a week later, Robert was driving the same silver Acura that him and Brian had driven off in. And he was involved in a single car accident on the Palmetto Expressway in Florida. So he's, now he's gone to Florida. Robert pulls his car over in the uh, Hylia's Westland Mall, which is where the Fl- Florida Highway Patrol, you know, patrol catch up to him. Because people are like, hey, we saw an accident and we saw the guy pull over. So the cops pull over. When the officers pull up to the car, they're suspicious about the amount of flies congregating around the trunk mixed with the smell of rotting flesh. Now, for some reason, three or four articles, because I looked at different ones. I didn't pull information out of all of them, but I looked in. They all mentioned that he got a gun case out of the car, and that was one of the things they found suspicious. But I was like, if you're a registered gun owner, it shouldn't be suspicious that you're like, hey, if I have to abandon my car because it's wrecked, can I grab my expensive stuff? And guns are expensive. But they keep mentioning that one of the things he grabbed was a gun case. It does fit in later because the cops are finally like, hey, man, what's in the trunk? And they make him open the trunk. And that's when they are able to see um, the body of Brian Trotter wrapped up in bloodstained fabric. And he was in the later stages of decomposition. So they think that he died that night that he didn't come home. So an autopsy would reveal that Brian had been shot multiple times. That's why the gun case does come into play later. But Robert, he's refusing to speak to anybody, any of the homicide detectives, anyone. He just is just gone completely silent. However, when they said, you know, you have one phone call that you can make, the single phone call he made was to Brian's sister. And in that phone call, he's not saying much and he's being like very vague and he's, you know, being really obtuse, but he sounds like he's apologizing to her. Like, you know, I'm sorry for what I did. Mm-hmm. And from what he says, he kind of like indicated that the murder took place in Virginia. So he was extradited back to Virginia. And the because they were wondering at one point, did the murder take place in D.C.? If so, then they had to go to the D.C. cops. You know what I mean? Right. But he indicated it's in Virginia. The Virginia cops are the ones that have them. And he's being charged with second degree murder and illegal transport of human remains. And he's being held in jail without bond. But I was just like, do you want to know what kills me? Because I read all those articles looking for. Why, oh. dude? Yeah. Why? This is your friend. And like nobody suspected anything. So it's not like you guys were beefing or had and so, and so you drove to the parents' house. Yeah. With probably the dead but, body in the car is what they're thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the body in the car. And then why are you going to Florida? Yeah, and then yeah, and then he's found in Florida. And I just think like maybe it was the hand of God that slapped the car into a car accident or something, because otherwise he wouldn't have been caught. Right. And I can't think of anything other than you're like going, you know, you're going to drop him in like and feed him to an alligator. Yeah, because I was thinking, why do you have his body a week later? At some point between Virginia and Florida, you didn't find a quiet spot? Yeah, I just feel like there is something unstable about this guy. You have a friend for more than 10 years. You kill him. You go visit his parents afterwards. And why are you calling They file a missing report. You leave and drive around with his dead body this whole time in your car. You must have been close to the sister or something. I'm assuming or maybe the my sister understanding was he was close with the whole family. Oh, well, why would you call the sister? Well, I thought maybe he was too embarrassed or maybe too, maybe ashamed. I don't know what to call the parents. So I thought it maybe be a little bit easier to call the sister. I don't know. That's just an absolute wild guess on my part. Oh, we're going to have to watch this one. I know I have to. I need to know the why. I'm one of those people like if oh, I you're never gonna... TV or whatever, I need to know why he did this. Oh, well. You know that that yeah. you're never gonna find that one out. That's possible. Yeah. Huh. So, then, yeah, that's like, crazy. so boo, I didn't have a <laughs> so boo, I had a murder of a friend on a friend. Although there is a case, it's not the next one I'm gonna talk about, but maybe the one after that. And which you know how we always talk about it was the husband. Literally everything points to the fact that it was the husband, and then they find out later, not the husband. Whoa. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, because you and I are. I don't even believe it. We're like, it's the husband. It's the boyfriend. You know what I mean? It's the partner. It's the person closest to him. And then this time, everybody was like, it's the husband. It's the husband. It's the husband. Take him down. But the cops can't. And guess what? Not the husband. (laughs) Holy crap. Yeah, so I'm working on that one. Yeah. All right. The next one I, I am going to tell you about, I will let you know, it's a solved cold case. And you're probably going to get a lot of those because once the algorithm figures out that you like solved cold cases, especially YouTube, they just barrage you with that shit. And my next one is unsolved. Oh, yours is unsolved? Oh, mine's a solved one. Okay, sweet. All right, Jen. Well, <laughs> I will talk to you later for next time. All right. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye. <laughs>